Hello, in this video, we're going to talk about mean arterial pressure and its relationship with other factors, such as your cardiac output. So here we have a diagram of the heart. Now, two factors are used to calculate your cardiac output. These are your heart rate, which is your conduction system, and your stroke volume, the amount of blood ejected by the heart with each beat. So heart rate, stroke volume give your cardiac output. But there are other three things that influence your stroke volume. This is your preload, contractility, and afterload. So in total, there are four determinants of cardiac output. So in your vessels, your arteries and veins, there can be vasoconstriction and vasodilation. This will either increase resistance or decrease resistance. All in all, this will make up your systemic vascular resistance, also known as your total peripheral resistance. Thus, your cardiac output and your systemic vascular resistance can be used to calculate your arterial pressure. And so we can say that cardiac output multiplied by systemic vascular resistance equals your mean arterial pressure. On a side note, your mean arterial pressure therefore will affect your afterload. Because if it will increase, it will increase your afterload. In your big arteries in the body, there are special receptors, special pressure receptors called baroreceptors. These are specifically found in your carotid sinus and your aortic arch. These baroreceptors will detect an increase or decrease in pressure in the arteries and will relay this information to the brainstem, to the medulla oblongata to areas of the medulla called the medulla vasomotor center and the cardiovascular center. And depending on what the input is, the response will target different areas of the body. So for example, the response will influence the systemic vascular resistance, either telling the body to cause vasoconstriction or vasodilation. The response from the medulla oblongata will also target the contractility of the heart. So for example, it will tell the heart to increase contractility or decrease contractility. The medulla vasomotor center will also influence venous return. So how much blood is returning to the heart? And as we know, venous return will affect preload. The cardiovascular center in the medulla will have a response that will influence your heart rate, either decreasing your heart rate or increasing your heart rate. It's also important to know that your higher brain centers also communicate with the medulla vasomotor center and the cardiovascular center. So for example, in a state of emotion, fear, stress, worry, the higher brain centers will communicate to the medulla oblongata, telling it to increase your heart rate, for example. Finally, it's important to know that your cardiac output, the amount ejected by the heart in one minute, will also therefore influence your venous return, how much blood will return to your heart. So I hope this simplified diagram can allow you to understand the relationship between different things, between the arterial pressure, cardiac output, and the, the determinants of cardiac output itself, and the response from the medulla vasomotor center and the cardiovascular center. Just to recap, the mean arterial pressure is the cardiac output multiplied by systemic vascular resistance. But clinically, the mean arterial pressure is calculated with a different equation, which is diastolic blood pressure plus one-third of systolic blood pressure minus diastolic blood pressure. What does this mean? Let's look at a diagram to explain. So here we have the pressure from zero millimeters mercury. The diastolic blood pressure, if you imagine you were measuring the pressure around the aorta during diastole, which is the phase when the ventricles are being filled with blood. The diastolic blood pressure of an average adult is about 80 millimeters mercury. Systole is when the ventricles are contracting, ejecting the blood out of the heart. Imagine measuring the pressure in the aorta during systole. The average systolic blood pressure in an adult is about 120 millimeters mercury. And obviously during diastole and systole, the pressure fluctuates, going up in systole and going back down during diastole. The mean arterial pressure is about one third 
of systolic blood pressure minus diastolic blood pressure. And so in order to calculate this mean arterial pressure, it's essentially calculating the diastolic blood pressure, which is about 80, and then one third of systolic blood pressure minus diastolic blood pressure. I hope this made sense. Thank you for watching.